Third graders, do you know the story of the three little pigs? Yeah. You've heard of that? So I think I have it figured out. You tell me if this is right. It goes, little pig, little pig, let me come in. And the pig says, no, no, by the hair of my chinny chin chin. And then the wolf says, then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. Is that right? Okay. Thank you. I'm a little rusty on my stories. You know, in the dime of Adam and Eve, there was the Garden of Eden. And from what I understand of the Garden of Eden, it was a place where there was no ruin, no suffering. And so, of course, wolves did not eat pigs. I guess they must have just eaten grass. Isaiah, in today's reading from his book, seems to have in his mind that one day the Garden of Eden is going to be reestablished on the earth. And part of his vision is that the baby will play by the cobra's den and have no fear of injury. The calf and the lion cub will graze on grass together because apparently meat-eating meat animals will make do with grass. And he says that, that the sheep and the wolf will lie down together. And so I gather that if, if a wolf even isn't going to be eating the sheep anymore, then in that, when that vision is established, pigs will be safe from the wolf too. We might not realize it when we look at the trouble in the world and in our lives, but in truth, the Garden of Eden exists in the world today. It's not called that. We hear from the lips of St. John the Baptist in our reading from the Gospel of Matthew that it's called the Kingdom of Heaven. And that Kingdom of Heaven is in the world. It's not just coming one day, it's here right now. Jesus established the kingdom when he was born of Mary 2,000 years ago. It's not fully present yet. That will happen when Jesus returns in glory at the end of time, which is one of the things we prepare for in the season of Advent. Advent's about getting ready to celebrate the festival of Christmas but it's also about getting ready for the day when Jesus comes in glory. It may be soon, because if we're living a truly Christian life, we have nothing to fear when Jesus comes again. In our reading from Isaiah, we hear about this stump of Jesse from which, from which a, a sprout comes forth. That stump is a reference to the, all the kings of Israel. Jesse was the father of the greatest of the kings, David. It's a stump now, in, as Isaiah envisions, because the kings have been so bad. They've served themselves, mostly, not God and not God's people. And so God cut down the tr proud, tall tree that once was representative of these kings. But Isaiah sees that a time is coming when a king will be born, and he sees it to be the son of the current king, Ahaz, who unfortunately didn't turn out to be that great a king either, this son of Ahaz. But he sees a day coming when this great, when there will be a truly worthy king who has the spirit of counsel and understanding and wisdom and strength and fear of the Lord, those gifts that we receive in confirmation. And Jesus is the one that we believe fulfills that, that expectation that the prophet Isaiah has in this reading. Jesus is the one who manifests these qualities of a truly great king. He is the king of the world, as we remember. And in his coming, he established the kingdom of heaven on earth, a new garden of Eden. And so I guess 
anybody here might very reasonably ask, well, if, if the Garden of Eden is here on earth, why do I see such terrible things happening in the world? Well, the sinfulness of the kings of Israel and their people wasn't eradicated with Jesus' coming into the world. He conquered sin and death by his cross and resurrection, but we still are unfortunately given to sin. And so it's not the garden it should be yet because of our brokenness. But that doesn't mean the kingdom isn't here. It is here. And we have the responsibility to persevere in building it. Jesus has, is using us as his bricks to raise the kingdom of heaven and cause it to spread all over the world and to encompass every person. So we know through Jesus' life what is expected of us. And if we live that life fully, then the kind of good fruit that is necessary to see the realization of that kingdom will be seen by all. So what does that fruit look like? What does the Garden of Eden appear to be in the, in the world? Well, when kids like the third graders here walk away from a potential fight on the playground and instead opt for peace, that's a sign of the kingdom of heaven, that Garden of Eden. Another sign is when we are merciful, when we practice forgiveness towards someone who has harmed us in some way. Another bit of evidence of the kingdom of God, the Garden of Eden here on earth today, is, let's say, we choose to spend a bit less on Christmas gifts and use the money that we have saved as a, a way to benefit the poor, whom we heard about in our psalm, who will have nothing to fear anymore when God comes again in the person of Jesus at the end of time. And so, brothers and sisters, let us do our part to make sure that that kingdom of heaven is clear, is, is evident to those in the world. When we do what we can through the strength God imparts to us by means of Eucharist and, and the sacrament of reconciliation and the other sacraments through prayer and through our using the Bible, then flowing from the fruits that are part of our lives will be a greater evidence to all in the world of the coming of God, of the presence of his kingdom that will be fully realized when Jesus returns in glory at the end of time.